Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are talking about something interesting and important for privacy in AI, homomorphic encryption and decentralized privacy techniques. It sounds fancy, but I'll break it down step by step. I'll explain how you can actually do computations on encrypted data and how we can train AI models without gathering all the sensitive data in one place. This is a game changer for fields like healthcare, finance, and even your personal voice assistant. A few years ago, I have published some research articles on this over my LinkedIn newsletter. I'll share the links in case if you would like to deep dive. First up, let's talk about homomorphic encryption. In simple terms, encryption is like locking data in a box so nobody can see it without the key. Homomorphic encryption is a special magic box. You can do math on the data while it's still locked. Imagine you send your doctor's records to a cloud service, but you lock them in a box with a code. Normally, to analyze your records, the service would have to unlock the box and see the data. Homomorphic encryption means they can manipulate that locked box, like adding or multiplying values inside it, without ever unlocking it. After they're done, they send you the result in the box form and only you can unlock it. When you open it, the answer is the same as if the service had done the math on the original data. This idea comes from cryptography. As one security glossary explains, homomorphic encryption allows computation on encrypted data so it can remain confidential while processed. In practice, most systems work best if the data is numbers and you do addition or multiplication. The result is still encrypted and only the holder of the private key can decrypt it. This lets us outsource computations without ever revealing the raw data. Now, there are different flavors of homomorphic encryption depending on what operations they support. Partially homomorphic encryption. This type supports one operation only, either addition or multiplication, but you can do that one operation as many times as you want. For example, RSA encryption is multiplicatively homomorphic. You can multiply encrypted numbers and get a valid encrypted result, but you can't add them without decrypting. Somewhat homomorphic encryption. This supports both addition and multiplication, but only a limited number of times. It's like a calculator that can do a few operations on a locked input, but after a point it runs out of fuel. So you might do a couple of adds and multiplies on the encrypted data, but not too many. Fully homomorphic encryption. This is the holy grail. It supports unlimited additions and multiplications on encrypted data. In other words, you can do any calculation on the locked data and the result will decrypt to the same answer as if you'd done it on the real data. It's like having a super chef who can make a whole banquet out of locked ingredients without opening the pantry. The downside, it's still very slow and computationally heavy compared to working with plain data, but researchers are making it faster every year. So why do we care about homomorphic encryption in AI? Well, imagine a scenario. A hospital wants to use a powerful AI to analyze patient data, but privacy laws forbid sharing the raw records. Homomorphic encryption can help here. The hospital could encrypt its patient data and send it to the AI service. The AI can then run its model on the encrypted data for example, do a cancer detection inference or calculate risk scores and produce an encrypted result. When the hospital decrypts that, it's the same as if the AI saw the actual data. But at no point did the AI or the cloud ever see the raw patient records. This idea also works for training AI models. For example, a company could train a model on encrypted data from customers without ever seeing their personal info. Or a smartphone could personalize your assistance model using your voice data locally, sending only an encrypted update back to the company. Popular AI use cases include secure model. Inference. Let's say you want to use a cloud AI to classify images or text, but those inputs are sensitive, e.g. 
personal photos or financial records. You can encrypt your input, send it to the model and get back an encrypted prediction that only you can read. Encrypted data processing. Banks can encrypt transaction logs and run fraud detection algorithms on them in the cloud without revealing customer details. Privacy preserving ML training. Multiple organizations can collaboratively train a model without sharing raw data. Of course, homomorphic encryption is mathematically complex, but there are software libraries that make it easier for developers. Here are some key ones. Microsoft Seal, a widely used open source library from Microsoft Research for fully homomorphic encryption. It provides a friendly API to do math on encrypted data. SEAL is written in C++, but has wrappers for other languages. Tenseal. Built on top of Microsoft Seal, Tenseal gives you a Python interface for homomorphic encryption, especially targeting tensors for machine learning workflows. It supports encrypting vectors and matrices and doing operations like dot products and matrix multiplies on ciphertext. Palisade, an open source lattice cryptography library that supports homomorphic encryption schemes among many cryptographic primitives. It's designed for performance and post-quantum security. Concrete, an open source fully homomorphic encryption compiler that aims to simplify using it in applications. It builds on Google's technology. The docs say Concrete is an open source FHE compiler that simplifies the use of fully homomorphic encryption. This means it can take parts of your code and turn it into something that runs on encrypted data. Now let's switch gears to the other half of the title, Decentralized Privacy in AI. This usually means we train or run AI in a distributed way so that sensitive data stays local with the user or organization. The big ideas here are federated learning, secure multi-party computation, and differential privacy. Together, these let us build AI without collecting everyone's raw data on one server. First, federated learning. This is a way to train AI models across many devices or servers without moving their data. Think of your smartphone. It has all your private text messages or voice recordings. Federated learning lets your phone improve a language model like autocomplete by training on your messages locally, then only sending the model update, not the messages themselves to a central server. The server then aggregates updates from millions of phones to improve the global model and sends the new global model back to devices. In more formal terms, federated learning is a decentralized approach to training machine learning models. Each node across a network trains a global model using its local data, with a central server aggregating node updates. The key point is only model parameters or gradients are shared, not the original data. This minimizes privacy risk and often complies better with regulations. The IBM Think article on FL notes that this approach helps address privacy concerns as sensitive information remains on the node, preserving data privacy. In practice, companies like Google have used FL to train models on mobile keyboards without collecting typing data. Besides the privacy benefit, federated learning can bridge data silos. For example, a group of hospitals can train a better model on patient data collectively. An NVIDIA blog shows that large-scale collaborations in healthcare have successfully used FL. Multiple independent parties jointly train an AI model across hospital systems. In that example, 20 hospitals on five continents trained a model to predict COVID-19 patient outcomes and achieved a 38% improvement in generalizability over local models. Similarly, Financial institutions can use federated learning to improve fraud detection by pooling model updates instead of customer data. Next up, secure multi-party computation. This is a cryptography trick that lets multiple parties compute a function on their combined data without revealing their individual inputs. In other words, imagine two hospitals want to compute the total number of patients they have in common, but neither wants to reveal its list of patient IDs. 
SMPC protocols let them compute that total privately. Technically, SMPC is a subfield of cryptography with the goal of creating methods for parties to jointly compute a function over their inputs while keeping those inputs private. It's like having two locked boxes and a secret handshake. You can jointly open a box with the sum of secrets, but neither box is exposed to the other party. In AI, SMPC can be used for secure aggregation of model updates. For example, in federated learning, the server might use an SMPC protocol to combine encrypted gradient updates from clients without decrypting them individually. This way, the server can compute the new model while being cryptographically prevented from seeing any single client's update. As IBM's explanation notes, SMPC allows the server to carry out secure aggregation computations on encrypted model updates in a way that no individual's data is revealed. Think of SMPC as an extra layer of protection. Even if the aggregator is compromised, it can't read individual inputs. In practice, SMPC is used in scenarios like joint auctions, private set intersection, and any case where organizations collaborate on private data analysis. Finally, differential privacy. This is a statistical privacy technique rather than a distribution method. The idea is to add a controlled amount of randomness or noise to any outputs so that an attacker can't infer too much about any single individual. A simple analogy, imagine you want to publish the average salary of employees but without revealing anyone's exact paycheck. You could add a little random noise to the average so that the published number isn't exactly true but close enough that it still conveys the overall info while protecting each person's exact data. Formally, Differential privacy is a mathematically rigorous framework for releasing statistical information about datasets while protecting the privacy of individual data subjects. In plain English, if someone's data is in the database or not, the published result looks almost the same. No adversary can tell if any one person's data was included because the noise masks it. In ML, DP is often used in federated learning by perturbing the model updates or gradients sent to the server. For instance, clients can add random noise to their gradient before sending it, and the server aggregates these noisy gradients. This makes it even harder for an attacker to reverse engineer private data from the gradient updates. As IBM explains, differential privacy adds noise to model updates before transmitting them, making it difficult to reverse engineer or distinguish which client node contributed an update. Many systems combine FL, SMPC, and DP together for maximum privacy. SMPC for secure computation and DP for statistical obfuscation. So how does all this fit together? The big picture is private artificial intelligence training and inference without centralizing sensitive data. Instead of sending our raw data to one giant server, a centralized model, we keep data local on devices or organization servers and only share what's necessary. Encrypted values, model updates, or noisy statistics. In a centralized model, all user data is aggregated in one place, the cloud, or a corporate server. This makes building a powerful model easy, but it's risky for privacy. A data breach or misuse could expose everything. In a decentralized privacy model, the data stays distributed. We might only send encrypted computations, gradient updates, or noisy summaries. This means no single point has all the raw data. This approach has big benefits. For one, it preserves privacy by design. Sensitive details never leave the owner. It also reduces compliance headaches. Finally, it often fosters collaboration. Organizations can build better models together without ever fully sharing secrets. For example, banks could jointly train a fraud model using SMPC and FL so that no bank sees another's transactions. Hospitals can share encrypted patient stats through HE or FL without crossing privacy lines. Let's make this concrete with some use cases. Healthcare. Patient data is extremely private. Homomorphic encryption could let researchers run statistics or even train ML models on encrypted patient records. Federated learning is already being used for medical AI. 
for instance, multiple hospital train a COVID-19 prediction model on their own patient data, improving accuracy without sharing any records. Differential privacy is also used to share medical statistics, like in national health studies without exposing individual patient info. Think of it like this. A hospital can contribute to a global AI for diagnosis without ever leaking your name or details. Finance. Banks and insurers have tons of sensitive data, transactions, credit scores. HE allows them to run analytics or ML on encrypted datasets in the cloud. Federated learning can let several banks collaborate to detect fraud. Each bank trains on its data locally and shares only model updates. This way, no bank sees other banks' customer data. Even personal finance apps on your phone can use FL or DP to learn from your habits without uploading your actual spending history. Personal assistance, IoT slash edge devices. Devices like smartphones or smart speakers collect personal info, voice, habits, all the time. To improve AI, like speech recognition, companies use on-device ML. For example, Google introduced federated learning in 2017 to train next word prediction models on billions of mobile keyboards without collecting actual text. Now imagine your home assistant using on-device training. It listens to you, learns your preferences locally, and only sends encrypted model improvements to the cloud. Apple even announced it will integrate homomorphic encryption into iOS 18 which could enable private analytics or AI on device. This means things like voice commands or health data could be processed in a privacy-preserving way in future personal devices. Other examples, anything with edge devices IoT can benefit. Your smartwatch collecting health metrics could use FL to improve health predictions without sending raw readings. Autonomous cars might share encrypted sensor data to improve mapping without revealing locations. And of course, any field with sensitive data, government defense research, is eyeing these techniques for secure data collaboration. In summary, decentralized privacy techniques allow AI to be private by design. They're helping shift from collect everything and then secure it to keep data at the source and compute securely. This is crucial as we deploy AI in sensitive domains. In short, homomorphic encryption and decentralized privacy techniques are powerful tools for protecting user data in AI. They're still evolving, but companies and researchers are already using them in the real world. For cybersecurity and AI professionals and curious beginners like you, it's an exciting time these methods will be a big part of how we build AI that respects privacy in the years ahead. Thanks for watching. Hope this deep dive demystified homomorphic encryption and federated learning for you. Feel free to leave questions or comments below. Refer the links for deeper research articles I published few years ago. Until next time, stay aware and stay secure.